The movie begins with an unknown man visiting Frank, an old Irish-American World War II veteran in a wheelchair in a nursing home. Frank begins to recount his life as a hitman for the crime syndicates and his life working for and with Jimmy Hoffa. He recalls thinking when he was younger that house painters painted houses, before he became a painter, which is another way of saying he killed people, he was a typical working guy. Frank recalls shooting Robert Redder in Detroit during the wedding of William Bubalino's daughter to Robert Redder. Frank was assigned the responsibility of driving Russell Bubalino to the location while also attending to some personal concerns. This entailed gathering funds. Frank calculated their route and figured it would take three days to get to the wedding destination, with business breaks and rest stops along the way. A few minutes after they get into the car, Russell's wife asks them to stop for a smoke. Russell points out that they just got into the car and promises that they will stop later. The wife says she will smoke in the car, and this does not please Russell, as he does not allow anyone to smoke in the car. Eventually, Russell, his wife, Frank, and his second wife Carrie, plan to take a puff break soon after they begin their voyage. While waiting, Frank and Russell note that they are at the same location where they initially met. The scene shifts from many years ago, when Frank was a simple truck driver. While traveling, his vehicle breaks down, and he stops at a gas station. Soon after, Russell approach us and helps him repair the truck with ease. Frank thanks him, and as they try to get to know each other, Russell refuses to say his name or other things about him. Frank could tell the oddly educated man was a wealthy person. As a result, Frank abandoned his search for his true identity. He visits a tavern after finishing his order and meets a man named Skinny Razor, a mobster, they promptly arrange for Frank to deliver meat to Skinny at a reduced price. The price of the meat is discussed between him and the butcher shop staff. For the following weeks, Frank and Skinny Razor continue to work together, and things seem to be going great, as the mobster is happy. One day, when the butcher opens the truck door, he realizes one day that there is no meat. Frank swears he does not know what happened, although he knows full well that he was delivering meat to Skinny Razor instead of to his customers. As a result, Frank is accused of theft by the delivery business. Frank's lawyer tries to find out if he knows what happened, but he does not reveal Skinny Razor's name. Nevertheless, his lawyer promises to protect him in court since it is his job. When Frank cannot identify his customers to the judge, his attorney, William Buffalino no, has the case dropped, claiming that there are no customers because he did not steal meat in the first place. The outraged judge yells at the accusers to stop coming to the court without factual evidence. After the success at court, William and Frank go out to celebrate, and William introduces Frank to Russell. Russell sits and watches Angelo Bruno, the boss of the Philadelphia Mafia. After conversing briefly with Frank, Russell is also identified by Frank as a member of the family that controls everything from Philadelphia to Atlantic City. Russell soon joins Frank, and they begin talking in Italian. Russell reveals that he was born in Catania and asks Frank where he learned the language. Frank reveals that he fought in World War II for four years. It was a difficult time for everyone. They had to listen to orders and risked being killed at any time. After the war, Frank no longer cared what he was going to do with his life. The important thing was to get out of that hell alive. He recounts having to make opposing soldiers dig their own graves before shooting them during the battle. Russell listens to Frank carefully and is immediately fascinated by his stories. After meeting Frank, Russell realized that he could trust him and have him work for him. Subsequently, Frank also began working for Angelo, the mobster. The scene returns to the road trip of Frank, Russell, and the two women. Here, Frank begins another narrative, talking about Carrie and her family. Russell owns several enterprises around the state and is given the authority to change the laws. 
Frank is on hand to handle a lot of business for them, as well as Skinny's. Frank had three kids with his first wife, Mary. One day, when found out that Peggy, his daughter, had made a mistake that resulted in the grocery shop employee shoveling her, he sought retribution for her by beating the staff, which traumatized Peggy. The scene shifts to Detilio, who gives Frank the chance to gain a lot of money by blowing up a place that was threatening his business. He made a down payment, but Frank kept the agreement private. Frank inspects the property first thing in the morning and plans to close the deal at night. Before he can finish his task, Angelo drives him to their meeting location, where Russell is also present. Angelo informs Frank that he was about preparing to blow his business. Russell saves Frank's life by convincing Angelo that Frank was unaware it was indeed Angelo's property. Frank apologizes and then fires a hole through Detilio's skull. Frank came into Rini at the bar, where he typically hangs out with his pals. He later divorces his wife and marries Rini, with whom he had two additional children. Back on the road, Frank makes a couple stops to collect money for Russell. Frank recalls Russell referring him to Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy is the International Brotherhood of Teamsters boss, and he works with Russell and his gang. Frank helped Jimmy with his taxi service. Jimmy was quite impressed by Frank's handling of the cap issue. Jimmy also opposes Teamsters Vice President Tony Pro, who has his own business plans. Frank becomes Jimmy's bodyguard and introduces him to the family. Peggy adores Jimmy, perhaps more than she does Russell, whom she knows is bad news. Russell gave Peggy ice skating shoes and money for Christmas, but Piggy dislikes Russell and does not thank him politely. Russell, who is unable to have children with Carrie, still adores and spends time with the girls. Jimmy and his friends are staunch opponents of the Kennedys. As a result, Jeff's election in 1960 hit a raw nerve with Jimmy. He screams to his men, and with Frank in the room, he thinks he's ranting at him, but Jimmy tells Frank that he was not. After Jeff's assassination, Jimmy tells the press in November 1963 that Bobby Kennedy, the former general counsel, is now simply another lawyer. Bobby later organizes a squad to track down Jimmy, who is eventually jailed for jury manipulation. While Jimmy is away, Frank takes over the Teamsters and proceeds to utilize the union's funds for himself for to make illegitimate loans to the mob. Jimmy learns in prison that Tony Pro is also there for extortion. Tony attempts to resolve his issues with Jimmy, but they are unable to reach an agreement, resulting in a brawl that is broken up by guards and other convicts. In the middle of a German parade, a random mobster was shot dead. Crazy Joe Gallo, who recruits thugs to do his dirty work, is who Frank and Russell suspect sent the gunman. Joe, as his name suggests, is a hothead loose cannon. Joe was brought by Frank and Russell to watch Don Rickles perform on his birthday, and Joe nearly snapped at Rickles for a joke. Joe is judged too dangerous by the mob, so Frank is sent to kill him. In jail, Frank remembers picking out specific guns for the operation. He sees Joe enjoying dinner with his family and shoots at him before following him outside and finishing him dead in the streets before flying away. Jimmy is freed from prison in 1971, and despite Richard Nixon's presidential amnesty, he is unable to rejoin his gang. In any case, Jimmy tries to retake control by dumping on other Teamster leaders and ignoring crime family activities. Russell asks Frank to speak with Jimmy about his conduct, but Jimmy assures Frank that he cannot be hurt or else everyone involved will go to jail. During the event, Jimmy Hoffa personally presents Frank with an award. Joe notifies Russell that Jimmy has been delaying the loan payments. Frank is watching the talk, and things are about to take a dramatic turn. Later that night, Frank accepts the award and delivers a speech. During the after-party, Jimmy tells Frank to have some people near him for his own safety. Jumping ahead to 1975, Frank, Russell, Rini and Carrie are on their way to Bill's daughter's wedding. 
When Frank learns that Jimmy will not be there, he calls him during the break. Russell informs Frank that Jimmy must be dealt with. After Jimmy's encounter with Tony Pro and Anthony Cocalon, Frank arrives in Detroit. Believing Tony Pro has abandoned him, Jimmy is taken aback by the presence of Frank, his foster son, and fellow gangster Sally Bugs. Tony and Russell have been informed that they will be met at the new site. Jimmy grudgingly enters the car with Frank after the meeting. He is upset because he has been waiting for Frank for quite some time. As Frank takes Jimmy to the house, he finds it empty. Uneasy and apprehensive, Jimmy begins to flee, but Frank shoots him twice in the back of the head. Frank leaves Jimmy's body there, and two guys later pick up his body to cremate it. Frank meets up with Riss as though getting rid of such a trusted ally was a piece of cake. Bill's daughter's wedding bears out his plan. The removal of Jimmy creates national headlines. Joe, Jimmy's wife, contacts Frank, seeking information about her husband, unaware that it is the same guy who murdered him. Peggy realizes her father was engaged in whatever happened to Jimmy when Frank casually says that he hasn't called Joe to offer his condolences. In the present, Frank reveals that it was the day Peggy stopped speaking to him. Frank, Russell, Tony Pro, and others are jailed on suspicion of Jimmy's disappearance, while others, including Sally Bugs, are slain. Everyone who knew Jimmy was called before the court to testify about their role in the disappearance. Frank spends one more time in prison with Russell before Tony Pro dies. They converse for a few moments before Russell is carried away to the hospital, where he eventually dies. After being released from prison, Frank is put in a retirement home. He is unable to walk and has recently been diagnosed with cancer. He pays Peggy a visit at her bank job, which she leaves the moment she sees Frank. Despite his efforts to speak with her, his attempts to reconnect with his other daughters fail. Frank is simply preparing to die with this. He chooses a green coffin for himself, which saddens the shopkeeper. He picks where he wants to be buried, and he learns of his lawyer's death. At the end of the night, he is carried to his room by a facility staff member. He requests the staff leave the door open, hoping that someone from his family may still want to visit him. The film ends with Frank sitting in a room, alone with only his memories and regrets. Thanks for watching. Please do leave a like and subscribe my channel for more amazing content like this.